Welcome everyone to AJ's World of Bodybuilding. And today we're joined by a freak, Brett <laughs> Wilkin. How are you? I'm good, AJ. It's good to good to hear you, man. It's been a it's been a minute, so glad we get we get figured out and hop on here quick and you know talk a little bodybuilding. What, what, what we have left for the remainder of the year. A lot of a lot of exciting shit ahead. So I'm excited to chat about it a little bit. I'm very excited for because you you have some news that I wanted to hear about your future plans for this year. But first, talk to us. I want to congratulate you, Brett, on in the beginning of the year. You were like for a couple of, for a good run there. You were like the talk of the town. You know, you were like everyone wanted to see how Brett Wilkin was going to do at the Arnold. You know, you brought so much positive hype to the game, and we saw that based on that guest posting you did late 2021, wasn't it? The guest posting you did. Talk to us a little bit. How was that feeling for you to go in like? One of the biggest names in bodybuilding. Yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of everything that lined up, you know, correctly in that, you know, we, we had a lot of momentum coming from Chicago the year before after placing second, um, and just the progress I've had before that. So it was a lot of a lot of fans, a lot of support, um, you know. And I, I I've always said I was super appreciate that. You know, prep went, you know, started out really well, and things are responding really well and looking awesome. Um, I just wasn't able to peak there at the end as, you know, as much as it, as best as I could have. So, you know, that's kind of the only bummer of the thing. But that's, you know, that's also bodybuilding. You know, I need, I'm still learning my body. You know, that's only, I mean, I, yeah, I was thinking about this the other day. That's still, the Arnold was probably my, I think, sixth or seventh show ever. You know, I mean, so that just shows you, like, I haven't, you know, I'm not a veteran. I'm not a seasoned veteran. I have less shows under my belt than a lot of amateur competitors still. So it's like, I'm still learning a lot of things. Matt's still learning things about my body. And so, you know, we're only going to continue to get better and things. So I'm excited for the future. That was a good start of my career, especially getting, you know, known into the bodybuilding world, getting that fan base. Um, so now I just got to continue, you know, execute. I gotta, I gotta take care of business on my end and keep getting better and better. And we got a lot of good bodybuilders right now, man. Like, You know, there's been different talks to the town, you know, we recently saw Marty come out, you know, the shit I've seen for a while. I knew he was going to do that someday, you know, Martin and then Andrew Jack, these guys. So really excited now with this new wave of people, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I started at the beginning of the year with that. It's just continued with some new faces, you know, blessing had a great year. Um, so it's, we're starting to see kind of the, the new wave of uh, faces and I'm, I'm glad I'm going to be a part of that. You trained back in the day with Martin. Has he always been this hungry and like determined and I'm going to win every show and like that passion? Has he always been like this or has he stepped up a notch right now? No, he has. You know, like I, I will say that, man. Even he's one of the few people that like I've ever met that knew they they wanted to be a bodybuilder when they were 16 years old. You know, like he went the Jay Cutler route. He like he decided, you know, when he was a teenager, he's like, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. And honestly, that takes a different type of person, man. You know, like I even thinking back on it, you know, I wish I would have started earlier and stuff, but part of me doesn't, you know, like I, I, I still, I'm glad I had those experiences, you know, in my early twenties of like, you know, the social setting, I played college football, you know, I worked a few different jobs. I got life lessons and stuff. And mm -hmm. it's just like, but you know, then there's people like Martin, you know, that did like the Jay Cutler rounds, like, Hey, like I'm going to be a bodybuilder and I'm going to. You know, I'm going to make sure starting now until I accomplish it that I'm going to be the best bodybuilder in the world. And so he's always been like that. You know, that's why I teamed up with him when we were both in Denver is, you know, I needed, you know, now I'm not locked in, obviously, because this is, you know, a few years back, I decided that we're all in and I'm doing this and this is my life. But it was good to have somebody like that, even at a young age, you know, when, where I can help him a little bit as well. And like, you know, he even taught me a few things and just the when you get somebody that passionate about it, you only, you're only gonna, you're only gonna soak that in as well and, and think the same thing. So he's always been like that and he will always will be, man. I, I don't know many more people that love bodybuilding more than him. And now, you know, he has his time on his hands. He, he's now established, you know, people are excited. So you're only going to see good things about him. I knew that. Shit, I mean, I knew that when he was competing as an amateur, he should have went pro probably the year before at USA is like, he, he looked even better. And like, mm. he just messed up a peak really, really bad. He, he lost it himself, but I knew back then that like he, he was going to be special. So it's good to see he's getting recognized and the only good things to come ahead. 
are you are you excited to face him at the Olympia? Uh, hopefully <laughs> this year, because you you have an announcement we're gonna get to. But w- w- are you excited to compete against him? Have you competed against each other before? No, I never competed against him, and I, I will. You know, it doesn't. It's not gonna affect me anything. The thing is, we both know that you know. We, we, you know, we even, we talked about this back in the day when we were, you know, super close and training together. It was like, there will be days when we're battling it out, but like that, that's the thing about bodybuilding. It's such a individual sport. Like, you know, we don't, you look at it as, Hey, I got to beat myself. So as mm-hmm. long as you're beating yourself and getting better, that's what it's all about. Um, it will be fun. You know, we're, we're definitely, there's not going to be any bad blood, but we're both super competitive as, as long as the, as, as well as everybody else. So it's just going to be, it's going to be some good memories and good experiences ahead, man. Talk to us a little bit about you moved different city, different gym, different everything. How, how is that going for you? So, yeah, we're, I am now down here. At, uh, I'm in South Florida. So, you know, down here at the revive and raw area, because those are my new sponsors, my coach, yeah. Matt lives down here, Matt Jansen. Um, so we made the move down here. It was just, it timed up well, you know, our lease was up back in Denver. Um, I re- we, I really wanted to start investing in a home and the homes out in Denver are crazy. Like the, the market out there is crazy. So we were like, you know, this is a good time to, we're young. We have, don't have kids yet, you know, younger, I guess, we, you know, we don't have kids yet. Let's see, let's kind of, you know, if we're ever going to make these moves, let's do it. So we, we packed up, you know, drew, drove across country here over here in America and now we settled down here. We've been here about two months now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it was it was definitely a transition there at first because coming from like a cooler, drier climate up in the mountains to down here where it's like a swamp land. Isn't it hot? <laughs> oh, it's so hot, dude. It's, you like I, that? I, no, I don't like it. No. I, 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 don't, I don't like it. I don't, I don't go outside during the day much, honestly, <laughs> right now because it's so humid. Like you just start drenched and sweating. But I'm getting used to it. You know what I mean? Like it's. But it's one of those things your body has to adapt. So I don't, it doesn't feel as crazy, you know, hot anymore as it was. So everything just kind of calmed down and feel good. And like, I'm really catching, I mean, I, I have been, but I started catching a gro- groove in training. Um, so it was, it was a good move in regards to, especially with the bodybuilding side of things. Um, I'm also, I just started, a, I'm about to start launch a business. Uh, okay. It's called, you know, I'll be posting a lot about that. I'm sure you haven't seen it yet, but it's because I just now started posting about it. Okay. But they're called the butcher hook. So what it is, it's a lifting strap. Um, yeah. It's a weight lifting strap. It's a, you know, a design that I actually, you know, um, bought the patent of. Oh, really? and it's, I've been using them for the last six to eight years. And finally, you know, I actually bought the company from a, a man back in Iowa, an older gentleman that was, you know, I sat down with him. I talked to him about it. You I have really them liked- there. I do. I actually have yeah. I about I have about a hundred pair right now, right you here. See you, um... So these are in right here. Like I said, I have about a hundred pair right now. I'm doing a little bit more production, but so I the they're the, they're these. They're lifting straps. You put yeah. them on your wrist here, and all you do is walk up to the dumbbell or barbell, and it's just a quick wrap, and it's on. So it's like. It's very, it's, it's about the simplicity, you know, you don't have to take your time wrapping up every time you don't have to, you know, so what it does is it provides the grip, you know, they're super lightweight. They stay on your wrist really well and something I've really liked product wise for years. So I decided, Hey, I'm going to take off with this, you know, use my platform um, to try to, you know, show these to the people and just let people try them because everybody that I've had actually wear them loves them. Like, so you know, I already have a few guys that have already took, you know, took a pair and they're, they're all about it. So I'm going to be launching these in about four weeks. Where can um, people buy them and how much do they cost? And and and, and do they last or do they, do, is it good quality? Yeah. So it's a nylon material. This one is, the other ones are uh, cotton with enforced nylon. Okay. So it makes sure they're not going to rip, you know what I mean? So like they, they last a while. I've used mine for years. Okay. Um, they're going to be on, I'm going to be able to for sale at thebutcherhooks.com. I got the domain. I'm building the website right now. Okay. And I haven't decided on a price point yet. It's probably going to be between 40 to the 45. So mm-hmm. very manageable, you know what I mean? So not breaking the bank. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you, like I said, once people actually just try them, they're going to spread. I, I believe they're going to spread like fire, man. Like mm-hmm. it, they, they're just a very unique product in that it's just so simple. It's a one, you know, one-stop shop. And, and that's another reason kind of came down here because, you know, the marketing team down here has helped me, the, you know, the, the content guys, um, the website designer. So it's all coming together, man. That's, you know, mm. that's what I've really been working on the last five months. Um, so now I can kind of start, you know, like you said, and I'm started a prep too. Um, and it's just, like I said, I want to really finish out this year, 
on a high note, and that's the plans. Uh, are you? I just saw. I, I watch my bodybuilding movies every day. I watch something that I watched before just to because here in Norway we don't have any real bodybuilding, so I have to get motivated with something else. And I yeah. saw Tom Platts. He he loved being in the office and creating things as much as he loved being in the gym. You know, do you have that business sense of mind, like creating things, and do you love that part also? I wouldn't say probably as much as Tom Platts. I know what you mean. I have seen that. Yeah. Um, I do, you know, I do, I do a lot of on the behind the scenes here. I have probably 30 to 40 clients and I coach across the nation. 40 um, clients. Uh 30 to 40. I think like 33 was the last time I checked. I, I gotta I gotta count it back up. Mm. Um, and so that keeps me really busy. You know, my, my wife Ivana, obviously, she does too. So we have our coaching business. Um, behind the scenes with a lot of people think that bodybuilders don't do anything besides just bodybuilding. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, well, and I get it. Cause there are some, you know, but like, I've always kept myself busy outside of bodybuilding. You know, when I was back in Denver, I was working probably six hours a day in the gym on top of like online work. Um, You know, now I'm filling that time. I'm not working at the gyms or anything. I'm actually, you know, filling that time, getting these done and created. And mm. I have a few other ideas to kind of build from this and, um, so yeah, you know, you always gotta be conscious of, you know, we're getting to the age we want to have kids soon as well too. So it's kind of like, let's set up our, our future, you know, especially with, you know, save up right now, do different things behind the scenes. And then, you know, I'm still my, you know, I still have this opportunity to run with bodybuilding really hard right now. So that's, that's, that's definitely the main focus. Cause I got, I got some good years ahead of me. And so this is just kind of supplemental and keeps me busy behind the scenes. Some good years. You just thought you just only did seven shows two years ago. <laughs> you were looking like men's. That's, that's what I mean. The, 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 the good years are ahead of me still. I know. I'm, I'm excited. One quick question about Ivana there. Is she, what is she competing now in, was it wellness she was going to do or what's happening with that? Um, She, you know, she was definitely, like I said, that was kind of, it was kind of our thought process in that, you know, and this is kind of what I picked up on is we are kind of looking, you know, we know the kids, we both want kids and we know it's going to be in the next couple of years. So I think it was more of her like kind of transitioning into that phase. Like maybe I'm going to downsize my upper body, but I still want to compete and do wellness. Um, so she's kind of been training that way throughout the year, but yeah. also she, she's kind of in a spot. She doesn't know exactly what she wants to do for next year. So she's just back to just, she did that for a while, but I think she missed training up her body so much. Cause that's her, you know what I mean? Like that's like, you can't, it's hard to take that out of somebody, but like, Hey, you can't train the way you want to. So I think now it's more just about health and wellness, you know, the army fitness, and she's just been training, enjoying it. And uh, if she wants to, I, you know, she's talking about it that, you know, have another go next year before we truly settle down with kids. So I'm going to support her. You know, she's support me really well with my run, you know, my, my run these, this last year and a half. So I, I'll support anything she wants to do here ahead. And I hope she does. You, you remember that she's got crazy, But Crazy. Brett, she cannot with this type of genetics not train upper body. Right. This is not a yeah, life. Yeah, it, it was just too cool to see, you know. So, yeah. I, I mean, you know, like I said, I'm gonna support anything she wants to do. Um, you know, we have our we have our big term goals that are always gonna be president, you know. And um, but if we have the time to just you know go for it, you know. So we are now in September, and before we ask the plan, before this prep and all it, do you feel? Do you feel? Do you feel you have like feel heat? Do you have unfinished business? I do have some unfinished business for this year, you know, and it's not more, it's not like, Hey, I, I gotta be like, Hey, I have to go win to prove everybody that, you know, I'm a, for you yourself. Know, I, yeah. This is more to myself that I just need to, I need to come in and look the way I know I can't, you know, you know, what happened to the Arnold was I wasn't as conditioned as I know I could be. Um, And it was, it was because we made some decisions there at the end, like chasing a little bit of size. And I'll just be honest about that. And I didn't bring in that sharpness that I know I can't, you know, so it, I've been, I've been chomping at the bit the rest of the year. And this was kind of the plan was either early next year or the, to end this year. And so I just told Matt, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of bull, you know, I, I, I got up to like, I was waking up above 280 and I'm like, okay, man, I'm just, I'm just ready. You know, mentally, mm. that's the thing about going into these, these bodybuilding preps. And you know, this is, you 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 know when you're ready and like and if you're trying to do a prep and you're not mentally there it's not a good thing so work. i know i'm mentally here right now and like i'm ready to prove it i'm ready to do it and, and that's what we're doing right now and so 
why not? If you're, if it's ready and I'm, I'm feeling good, everything's clicking that, you know, health is good. Um, we're going to run it. So that's what we're doing right now. So and what show is the butcher doing in 2022 now? So the show is it's, it's going to be what? So 10 weeks out from this Sunday. So we're going to do, we'll be doing the Romania show. So we'll be going out to Romania. Um, how far is that from you? I've already bought my VIP tickets. I'm oh, sitting up front with Jake Let's Wood go. and tell him that's the future Olympia champion. So don't worry. I'm already Bucharest. <laughs> yes, yes. It's All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm coming to see you, man. So Correct. Yeah. Um, 21st not... of November. 21st. The, 15th uh, of November. 13th. 13th, yeah. 13th mm -hmm. of November. And then I'm debating right now. I got to get it figured out. But I think I'm going to do so. The reason I chose Romania is because it's the last qualifier for this year. So Correct. it's the last chance to qualify for the Olympia that's in December. So I definitely want to do that. I'm I'm accept I'm expecting it to be you know loaded. I think there's going to be a lot of good competition there because there's going to be a lot of guys, especially European guys I'm guessing that want to get into the Olympia still and that's the last chance. So I think it's going to be a really good show, good chance to really, you know, be up against some good guys and then um I'll most likely stay over there in Europe. And then competing at the Spain show two weeks later too. Is that also pro call? No, that's for that'd be for twenty. That'd be for twenty twenty three. Oh, so, Brett! Yeah. Now you're using your your you're using your brain when you're planning now because you will go yeah. to the Olympia and then you're gonna win Spain and you have a whole year to prep for twenty twenty three Olympia. Also, then that's I mean that's you know best case scenario. So you got to put yourself in those positions. Um, so I just got to do the work now to make sure I'm I can accomplish that, and that's what that's what we're doing. So what's good about well, in Romania, as you said, we have the top guy. Maybe we'll see Martin come down if he doesn't win the UK one. But yeah, let, me. there we go. <laughs> there, there we go because most of the top guys are are going to be qualified. There are some big names that you know, but Steve Kuklo, he's not doing it. And, um, you know, there's the, the people who don't win the Arnold UK. And let's say Andrew Jack wins. That means James Holling said and um, Martin, if they don't beat Andrew, uh, they have to do Romania. Yeah, pretty much. That's what it sounds like for sure. But you'll be fresh, though. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll definitely be the fresh of, the, of that group. But, yeah, I think, it, like I said, it'll be. It'll be pretty stacked, man. Like, yeah, you got – think about those other guys doing UK from out there too, you know, like Mark Hector. He's looking amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously James, you know, big, you know, big Jamie. Um, so it'll be fun to get this experience because I've never really traveled internationally to compete. So get out there, getting in some new competition and, and see – and, you know, see where we stack up to finish this year. Arnold Classic UK about that. Do you do you see anyone beating and did you see Andrew Jack live or just on via Instagram and the, did you see him? Were you there? In Texas? No, I wasn't there. No, I just yeah, I just saw what what you saw online and everything. But hey, it was it was super impressive, man. That's that's a big dude. <laughs> like like you said, you know, two eighty, two ninety, over six foot, and and you know, damn good conditioning and stuff and. What's crazy is looking at those pictures that they're saying, like from you know the Arnold where he went pro until now, like the progress he made in that. So what could these next couple of months be? So we'll we'll see. He needs to, you know, I think you know, I think I actually I think Martin beat him on some of the shots, and especially on the back. Back you know? shots, yeah. But it was just the, his so front front and sides were so overpowering. So mm. it's just yeah, we'll see if he can improve and bring in some back shots. I'm kind of actually surprised he's competing. You know what I mean? Like you know he's already qualified. Maybe just you know, try to improve, you know, sharpen up the backside and bring it into the Olympia. Oh, but Brett, realistically, he's not going to make the top five at the Olympia. I know everyone is saying beating Big Ramy, and I don't think he's going to make top five at the Olympia. That's a very prestigious. And if yeah. you go to the no, Arnold. No, I, I agree with that. I do agree with that. If you, yeah, if you're, even if you're top eight in your pro debut or your Olympia debut, that's amazing. You know, you got to think those guys are returning. You got, Brandon Rami, you got Hani, you got William Bonac. That's looking. I'm sure he's going to be back to his what he was at the Arnold at least, yeah. which was really really good. You know, you can't think, you can't forget about Hunter and Nick. So like, those guys are all going to be better. So and and this is Andrew's first. So I agree. So maybe you're right. It's not a bad idea for fifty thousand fifty thousand dollars for Arnold Classic UK first prize. Oh wow, yeah. So 
Yeah, that's a like I said, it'll be it'll, it'll be a good for year for him if he gets those two titles. Mm. A quick question about Arnold. You were there. We, we're not gonna go into too much, but did you have Bonac or did you have Brandon? I had Bonac. Why? Because I was on stage and I could yeah. see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, like, yeah. I, dude, I was five feet, I was ten feet away from him. When they were going one on one, man, it was just that you know the the conditioning up close, the dryness of the skin, the muscle belt. The only thing that honestly, the only thing that that was off on Bonac was that his you know his gyno was showing you know so and I I think he he already took care of that. He had his surgery after there, so I think that's gone now. Um, he was just very more I, just impressive in person, you know what I mean? And he was on, especially on especially on Saturday night, the finals night. He was on, and so I I had him winning. Um, Brandon's not, you know, he still deserved to be up there and champion. Uh, you know, it, it's so close. They have a, those judges have a tough call, but if you if you're personally asking me, and I was judging that from what I saw, I had, I had William and the rest of the competitors around you there. What did they think? Did did they have all Bonac? I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't okay. really. I didn't really talk know. about. It. I think that was kind of kind of a little bit of a common you know we are a little bit of a little bit chatter of like oh that was surprising you know what i mean like and you know like i said brandon's such a good dude and a, you know champion and a representative that you're not going to be like against them or anything so it wasn't like that it was just you know what we saw here i don't, I don't know you know and so william handled it great man I, I talked to him for probably 20 minutes after the show we just sat back there and talked and he he says that's part of it you know and you gotta you know you gotta move on and and you know get better and so he, he handled it as best as you could because uh, he he I, I thought I thought he looked great, man. Yeah, he looked uh, looked fantastic in the recent pictures of him in vacation there, just lying on the sunbed there with the pecs and the uh, mm -hmm. the, the abs, and he's looking. Uh, this is how he's supposed to look fifteen weeks, sixteen weeks out, isn't it? Yeah, and I think you know I think the thing about him is just because of maybe because he doesn't do too much social media, not as much as everybody else. Um, you know, he's been around a while. So people are forgetting about him. Just like, the, you know, no one even had him in the top six at the Arnold. And look what he did. So, like, you know, he's going to be at least as good or better because he's been so focused because people I think I think it's really drove him this year. It's like being overlooked and everything. And he's still got it. So, like, I think he's definitely going to give a run in that. top. I mean, he'll be in. The, I think he'll be in that top five or he'll be really close and mixing and matching with them. So the, they need to be careful. They got to watch out for him. Do you feel sometimes it's a little bit pressure to always have to post on social media and all the time, or how do you feel about that? I think so, but you know, mainly more so, more so for guys in my position that are still coming up and trying to get recognized and get that. You know, guys that have been around a long time, like you know, the the Phils, the Kai's, whatever, the the Brandons, the you know, people have seen them. They've you know, they've, they've followed their journey, things like that. You know, with us, we're still trying to, you know, gain that and get that recognition. And, and you know, it's almost <laughs> – it feels like there's a social media competition sometimes of mm -hmm. who's posting about the best stuff and stuff. But, you know, obviously it doesn't – it truly – what people need to realize, it truly doesn't have any effect on the final product. You know, mm -hmm. what they're going to judge is what's in front of them on that day. Like, look, like, I mean, like, no offense, but look who's won the Olympia the last two years is Big Romney, and he mm. he's terrible at social media. I'm I'm, well, I'm, he, I'm not happy with this. Uh, <laughs> well, why can't he, he? He makes a lot of money. Why can't he just have one guy film him in the gym I, yeah. and post some YouTube videos about how do you eat, how do you train, motivate, inspire? Why can't he do that, Brett? I think he just doesn't like it that much. That's what I've heard. Is like he just he, yeah he's just old school. Likes to be let you know doesn't doesn't like to get involved in all the filming and stuff. And, you know, that's his, that's his choice, man. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. the thing is that's hard when you're supposed to be representing a sport in its, in its entirety though, too, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, it's one, that's one thing that, you, you know, he should have probably, especially this last year, should have probably tried to overcome or just had some, like you said, had somebody walk around and just film what he does. That, I, I think, I think enough people would probably just watch that and, you know, get a little bit more understanding of who he is behind the scenes. You know, we know he's the, the jolly, you know, nice giant, you know, very nice man. Yeah. We need to know, you know, people want to know a little bit more, especially in this social media area when they want to know a little bit more about the personality instead of the, the 20 words you say leading up to the Arnold, you know, last the, question about big Rami, when you see him and considering yourself, when you see him 300 pounds, these quads, nice shape, 
do you see yourself beating an athlete like that in the future? Are, are guys like you think, I'm going to take, I can take Rami? Or is it like you're waiting to see if he's going to fall off a little bit or whatever? Like, do you see yourself in the next three years beat Big Rami? That's tough, man. I, not necessarily, you know, unless, you know, <laughs> that's the thing about bodybuilding. You know what I mean? Like, it, he'll, he'll, probably wean his way out or the judges will before, you know, we ever get that chance. It's kind of like, you know, like the Phil Heath effect where, you know, even he won it seven times and like, you know, he probably should have won it that eighth time. I'm, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Like he probably, if you're going off shot to shot, he probably should have won eight times, but they're looking at a, are you always getting better? You know what I mean? Are, do you look better? Did you fix those things we told you to fix last year? You know what I mean? So you, you they're looking at the best version of yourself. So the thing is like, I don't think Rami's going to keep bringing the best version of himself. So I don't think, I think he, you know, I, I personally think that this might be his last year. You know, okay. he has I, he probably has a chance this year. I, I I'm thinking some, uh, there's going to be a different winner this year. I don't know who I'm not, I, I have no idea. Um, but I think there'll be a changing of the guard uh, for multiple reasons, but it, it's mainly, you got to keep on. If you ever want to have a run like that, where you're winning four or five like that, it's you got to make drastic changes each year and then like continuing to sharpen the craft. Um, and I don't, I don't really see that happening um, at this point in his career, you know? So you smell, an, you smell something new in 2022. I smell something new, man. So there's going to, you know, I think there'll be a new King of the Hill. Um, I still, obviously I personally, I still have some work over these next years, but you know, my goal is to continue to move up, you know, make the Olympia is my first goal you know, place in that top 10, move up and, you know, get into that top spots. You know, that's, that's ideally, you got to set those minor goals first. Um, and cause there's a lot of good competitors ahead of me that I got to start chipping away at. So that's, 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 you know, how I approach this and that's the only way you can. Um, but there's definitely, like I said, there's a lot of young guys here, Nick, you know, we got Hunter we got, you know, this, this new era of dudes that I think do we're going to see in these next five, six years, that's going to be really exciting and just something different. I sometimes um, laugh at the Instagrammers and some of the YouTubers talking about, oh, how the great it was in the 90s and blah, blah, blah. Because right now, oh, it was great. Of course it was great. But now, Brett, the, 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 you guys, you're, you're 250 pounds, 60 pounds on stage. Crazy condition, roundness. They didn't have before. You like the delts of your guys. It's just the le they didn't have your guys' legs. That's for sure. The legs that you guys are and new guys coming up all the time now. It, like it, and beautiful aesthetics. You got to have a tight waist now, and it's the only thing we need now. What's missing? I don't know what what are you. I'm not. You're sure missing you're the posing, Brett. That's oh, the okay. Like, that I was waiting for it. I was like, what? What are we missing? Are yes, we no. I, I, I agree. Posing now. I I agree with that. I I think obviously you know, especially in the times before, the posing was much better. Um, maybe you know, maybe that has to do with the 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 judging protocol on that. You know, once people realize that it's not as important anymore, it kind of lost its. It lost this importance, you know, when you're getting ready for a show, you only have so much energy. So are you going to apply it to your training or you apply it to like your cardio or are you going to apply it to your posing? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Especially the pay hey, posing doesn't really matter. Why should I do that? So there, you know, there could be many reasons, but I agree with that. It's something I, I know that's personally something I'm really trying, you know, focusing on, especially with coming down here. I have some more resources and it's just, it's something as a whole we need to. And I think if, you do a little bit of that part of the judging involved in that. Maybe, maybe they actually do it, do it that, or sorry, they actually do set that up at the Arnold with, with, you know, they actually half of it's the posing. It'll change some things. I don't know, but mm. um, that's, you know, we can't lose that art of the bodybuilding. That is obviously that's half of it. You know, that's what started it, the theatrical part of it, the entertainment part of it. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, you know, watching some good routines here at the Olympia and hopefully they kind of kick back up again and continue to get better. Yeah, it's tricky with that posing because it's a matter of like with Fred Smalls. You remember him? He won the best yeah. posing and it was entertaining, but he didn't look his best in the, you know, with the, the way he moved. You see right, some. Right. So it's kind of like it depends what the judge is like. But anyway, Brett, thank you for making this room. This is going to be now the stories next, this end of the season. 
It's going to be really good to have an American coming out to Europe. Uh, many of us in Europe can't go to America. You have to be vaccinated. You have to do all this. So this could be, uh, it's because we look to up to the Americans in bodybuilding, you know, so to have you guys coming out, it will be uh, a lot of us fans. We will remember that, you know, so thank you guys. Thank you for coming to Europe. And I can't wait to see you at Romania. Yeah, no, like I said, this is one of my goals with the whole bodybuilding thing was I want to, I want to go on a stint where I do international shows. I want to, you know, meet the fans over there. Um, so if you're watching this, you know, I'm excited to come out to Romania, Spain, you know, meet new people, see new things. Like I said, see, see what the scene is like out there, especially on the bodybuilding scene. Um, and just get this experience, man. This is going to be more about proving stuff to me, proving stuff to my team um, and, and enjoying it. So I will, I will see you, man, in like 10 weeks time. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm just pumped to get out there. So when you win the show, I'm going to order you a lot of tequila shots. You ready for that? You drink got one night. I got I got one night to drink some tequila shots, and we got to get back on track, all right? Good. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Bye-bye. <laughs>